Thanks for joining us again here on TK08 Television for Connection this week. Uh, with all the bad weather, we apologize. We've had to cancel some shows through uh, the last couple of weeks, but we're back on track, and hopefully the weather will cooperate in the future, and we can have a show for you every week. My co-host, Tabitha Odegaard, could not be with me today. She had to make an emergency run up to Springfield, so she'll be back with us next week. But we hope you always enjoy the show. We try to have different uh, organizations and individuals come in each week and talk about what's going on around the broadcast. And we're going to give you some good information here today. Stay with us. We'll be back on Connection in just a moment. Harrison, Arkansas, a town where business is personal. A Health Mart town. Pharmacist Tara Wilmot owns her Health Mart pharmacy. Here, Tara offers free one-on-one -on -one prescription medication consultations, providing information to customers in a way that makes them feel comfortable, not confused. Expert knowledge, personal attention. It's what makes Tara a Health Mart pharmacist and Harrison a Health Mart town. Your town is a Health Mart town. So visit your locally owned Health Mart today. Back on Connection here on TK08 Television, Dennis King and uh, our first guest uh, in the uh, studio today after we both had to get out of <laughs> all the bad weather, had to cancel on you yes, once, yes. and uh, Ginger Milan, and she's with the Boone County Library, and they always have a lot of things going on. I don't know if you've been to the Boone County Library, but you should go down there. It's a very active place, and they do a great job. For a community our size, I think we've probably got one of the nicest libraries anywhere around the country, and they do a fantastic job. You've been there how long now? Well, I've been here. I've been working there two years. I worked there for a year and a half, uh, right after I retired from teaching. Teaching, and yeah, I we had to resign. I, we had my father-in-law here, here, and he was not doing well. Right. And so um, I, I left, and then I had the opportunity to get the job I had before. Back. And I jumped at the opportunity to now do Now, you it. do basically adult programs. I do. Okay. I do adult programs, and I and also do all the publicity okay. for the library. Which is why you send us right, stuff all right, the time. Right, right, Well, we're yeah. glad you do. We, we well, thank uh, you. I always enjoy having you on and, and going down to the library every once in a while, and they have some great programs. And we're going to talk about some programs here. Yes. In fact, uh, well, let's, I'll start off, and then you can just kind of take off okay. with it. Okay. Um, the CAAH Seed Swap. Yes. Now, tell me about that. That okay. sounds interesting. C-A-A-H stands for Conserving Arkansas's Agricultural Heritage. Okay. And it's an organization. Uh, it was at UCA in Conway, and okay. the director um, of the program was a professor there, and he has since moved to uh, Georgia. So I'm not exactly sure if that's where they are headquartered mm -hmm. now, uh -huh. but my contact for this is at UCA. Gotcha. So anyway, they uh, started the seed swaps in 2008 at Mountain View at the Ozark Folk Center, and since that time, it's grown to uh, 14 locations around the state. Okay. And this is the second year for um, the Boone County Library to host mm -hmm. it. And... Um, I think they liked having it here. Uh, I, I made a pitch about how we're a, a rural mm -hmm. agricultural community we and with a long tradition of family gardens. And uh, so uh, they came last year. Uh, they brought heirloom seeds that are a part of their collection in their seed bank. And then we encourage people in the community to come and bring seeds that they saved. Okay. And... Uh, Last year was the first year. I didn't know what to expect, but we had over 60 people who showed up, and most of them did bring seeds. Um, wow. There was a lot of trading back and forth. There were vegetables, flower seeds. There was a lot of information. How do you grow this? Uh, what do you do about that? And uh, but the most interesting part of the day were some of the older people who came, hmm. uh, who brought seeds that their family. Um, their families had been saving for generations. Wow. When, you, know, you don't think about that. No, often, you do don't. You? you don't. But you said heirloom seeds. I'm thinking, hmm, I mean, heirloom furniture? And, uh, you know, but seeds that, seeds that have, uh, could be not, hundreds of years old. Right, right. And uh, that's their goal is to preserve all that. Wow. And that's why they go to all these different sites across the state hoping to um, get specimens of seeds they don't already have. Okay. And one gentleman came in and he had a type of seed, and I believe they were melons. Mm -hmm. that his family had been saving since 1920. 
Wow. So they were pretty excited. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're saving our agricultural heritage. That is true. Uh, they're so many <laughs> varieties of seeds and plants that no longer exist. And um, so that that's their goal. Wow. And it's a lot of fun. If you are not a gardener but are interested in gardening, it's a good place to get your introduction. Wow. And well, that, sounds, that sounds like fun. It is fun. And so you don't really, ha if you don't have any seeds, you still come. That's right. You okay. still come. And the library provides uh, coin envelopes, mm -hmm. the little brown right. envelopes. Yeah. And um, uh, so you can, um, you know, go around the tables and mm -hmm. gather your seeds. Mm -hmm. Some of the people who came last year had been going to seed swaps in other locations. Okay. Jasper has always had a seed swap at the okay. Newton County Library. Okay. So uh, it was very educational for me mm -hmm. and a fun day. And the best part about it, we had people who came in the library who said they had never been in there before. And some of them um, went downstairs and filled out applications for library cards. Very good. So we want everyone to come. Yeah. It's from 10 o'clock until 2. Okay. And, and, and what date? Can it is uh, February the 22nd, which okay. is coming up very soon. Right. Right, 22nd. Okay. And, um, is that a Saturday? It is a Saturday. Okay. I have a visual aid. Okay. Uh, these are right the there. posters. We have them all over the library. Mm -hmm. Very colorful. I'm in the process of um, delivering these around town and to other areas in the county. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you have any questions, you you may call the library or, or call me there okay. or send me an email, okay. and I'll see if I can answer your questions. Very good. That's sound very interesting. Yeah. I, I like that. Um, you know, that would be something if, if you're maybe not, if you haven't been a real gardener or expert uh -huh. at it, you'd get some great information to go to this oh, yeah. and, and meet people that are experts and maybe, I mean, seeds that are... A hundred years old. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, that and amazing. you know, it's uh, they're saving not only our agricultural heritage, but their own family heritage sure. when they do that. Wow. And I've had several people uh, who told me that their family saved seeds for many generations. Very so good. I'm hoping that they'll, that they'll come. Very good. Well, that's great, and that's good for Harrison and Boone County and yeah. the library to yeah. have that. Well, congratulations that you got them to well, come up and try you. us out. Thank and, you. Uh, that's great. So we'll mark that on the deal okay okay next uh, the sisterhood of the traveling pen writing workshop yes and okay. we are very excited about this back in the fall uh, we had a book signing uh, and program by an author named Jan Morrell and she wrote a book called the red kimono it was a very good uh, fiction book uh, about the Japanese American internment camp in mm -hmm. Arkansas mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> she is one of the members of this sisterhood and then in November uh, we had another member of the sisterhood Pamela Tucker who came and did a program at the library uh, and she's written several books the two that I have read are uh, My Life with a Wounded Warrior her husband is a, a Vietnam veteran and he was uh, he stepped on a landmine in Vietnam mm -hmm. and he has suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder since 65 1965 wow. Wow. and um, so her book is about living with a man who suffers from that and um, then she wrote uh, her most recent book is called Clueless Gringos in Paradise and she and her husband and their two 150 pound service dogs moved to Panama to live mm. and uh, it's one of the funniest books I've ever read <laughs> because the because the dogs were service dogs they rode up front in the cabin with them on the airplane and that was an ordeal wow. and uh, she's a very gifted writer very very funny the other three authors um, they all live in the Fayetteville area and um, they've all published books and we're, we're very fortunate to have them come to the library and and this is a free program okay. for our patrons. Okay, so um, anybody can come. Anyone can come. Perfect. They suggest that anyone who's interested in writing come. Okay. Whether you're a beginner, even if you're a published author, they, they, they want to share their tips with, with people who want to write. And there are five sessions. They're going to talk about building character. Uh, they're going to talk about uh, wasting words. Um, how to write creative nonfiction. Uh, it starts at 10 a.m. It's on March the 1st. Okay. That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday also, and it ends uh, at 5 o'clock. Uh, there's no charge for the workshop, but we are going to charge $5 for lunch. 
Okay. Uh, I asked I asked them if we would have an hour long lunch break, and and the ladies said no. We like to visit with the people who come. Very so good. we'll have soup and sandwiches. Good. So and, they can visit during right. the lunchtime, and then go back to the workshops. Right. And right. we've had a lot of interest in this. Several people have called, and and several people have signed up. Now, do you have a poster thing? For I this? do. Thank okay. you. I already yeah. forgotten. I, I love their um, name, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pen. Very nice. They are pictured down here, uh-huh. and the topics for the workshop are listed here. Okay. Uh, if you are required to register, so we'll know um, the, the number and mm-hmm. how many to, we're going to be feeding. Very good. And uh, it should be wonderful. It's a, it's a rare opportunity for our community. Very good. Very good. Okay. we got about four minutes left, so let's talk about the Buffalo National River Partners Program. That's okay. the next one. All right. Well, uh, Sybil Craig, she needs to be on this program sometime. She's president of the Buffalo National River. I've met her. Yes. yes. Well, uh-huh. she is awesome. And she does educational programs at the library January through October. It's always the fourth Tuesday of the month, mm-hmm. and uh, she always has very interesting speakers. And this month, the the speaker is a man named Tom Cron, <coughs> and he is a regional coordinator for Arkansas Frog Watch. Now, I, I'm always reminded of the canary in the mine. You know, when the canary dies, so you know you need to get out. <laughs> and uh, our frogs are an indicator of our our the quality of our environment right. and so he uh, has this program where you, he teaches you what frogs to watch for and to listen for and he will even teach you how to mimic some of the frog calls hmm. Wow! so it should be very entertaining now when is this one this is on february 25th okay. at 5 30 and uh, if you come early uh sybil always has refreshments there and you can visit with her and learn more about the Buffalo National River Partners. Uh, yeah, that that is an excellent program. I, I really, as I've mentioned, I've met her a couple of times. Uh-huh. And the Buffalo National River Partners, obviously, their whole goal is to preserve the Buffalo National River, which is a beautiful place. And for, if you've never been to the Buffalo River and it's right here in your back door, you should go sometime. And I don't go enough, but I, as a kid, I used to float there a lot. Uh-huh. And uh, it wasn't a national river then. That's how old I am. It was just a <laughs> Buffalo River. Uh-huh. But uh, it's a beautiful place. And, it they, and they do a great job. They do. Too. They and, do. Well, you, you know, Ginger, these are some great programs. And just a few that she's talking about here today, you can see the activities that constantly go mm-hmm. on at the Boone County Library. Right. And of course, Ginger's in charge of the adult programs along with the publicity and marketing part of it. But uh, th- these are some fun programs, well, and no cost. No cost. All free. Right. And, uh, you know, everything from learning about seeds uh, to the learning how to write mm-hmm. and so forth. And also, of course, the Buffalo National River Partners. And uh, what about frogs? Never think about frogs very often, but the, you hear them a lot, especially in the spring and summer. They're probably frozen right now. They're, they're hibernating. <laughs> they are. <laughs> so they cold. Are. But yeah. uh, Ginger, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we appreciate it. And you keep me updated. I will. And then come back in. And, you know, maybe once a month you probably should come in and update us on what's going on for the month. Oh, and thank you. These I are fun that. programs. And, I'm and sure. these are just the ones for adults. We have yeah, tons of yeah, programs tons. for children, teens. Yeah, um, you do have. Lots of things going on. Oh, lots of activities. <laughs> Plus, tons and tons of books and of course now they've all modernized as well you can get right. on the computer and if they don't have it there you can find it somewhere else so, that's right ginger thank you so much we appreciate it. ginger Milan with the boone county library talking about many activities going on there go by and check it out and uh, i'm sure there'll be some activity that it's for you and uh, we appreciate you joining us here for the first half of our show stay with us on connection we'll be back in just a moment Even the best of us make mistakes, so when trouble finds you, trust Campbell Bonding Company to help you through what can be a confusing and sometimes frightening experience. Jim, Robert, and Cole Campbell work as a family to offer your family understanding and compassion during a very difficult time. Campbell Bonding Company can help get your family back together quickly and confidentially. And in every step of the process, they're there for you. In times of trouble, let their family help your family. Campbell Bonding Company, 870-741-1138. Dental Creations on the Square in Harrison is the go-to place for all your denture services. We know how to get good results. We save you time and money because our lab is on site. 
a dental office you will like and trust. Dental Creations on the Square in Harrison, next to Harness Boots. Just look for the big red boot next door. Call today. You'll be glad you did. Back on Connection here on TKO8 Television, I'm Dennis King. My cohort uh, couldn't be with us today. Tabitha Odegaard, she had an emergency that she had to take care of, but she'll be back with us next week. Thanks for joining us. Join us every week as we have different organizations and people come into our studio here to talk about what's going on around the broadcast area and what's important to you right here in your own back door. And the next guest in the studio today is Patsy Dean. Patsy's going to tell us about something that I wasn't familiar with and, and I found out about it and I thought it's, it's important for the rest of the community, if you don't know about it, to know about this thing. And we're going to talk about Christ Food Pantry and Thrift Store. And we're so glad you could come in. Sorry we had to reschedule a couple of times. The weather didn't cooperate too much. No, it didn't, but that's <laughs> very understandable. I, I, I told Patsy when she was coming to our studio, which our Studio B is downstairs. B means basement. And uh, it, it's a nice studio, but around the walkway, there's some ice there. I said, you know, if you've never been in the Olympics or done any ice skating, here's a great opportunity to start because you can start at the top and go all the way down. We got her in here and we didn't... We didn't have any accidents yet, did None. We? <laughs> okay. Uh, when did the pantry begin? Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Well, originally, we began the pantry in November of 2011, and it was called Waterfalls Food Pantry. Okay. In August of 2013, we moved the pantry and changed the name to its current name of Christ Food Pantry and okay. Thrift Store. Okay. We opened the thrift store to help fund the food, and we have a couple other churches that came in with us they they saw the need and they had a heart cry to help our community with food so okay. now uh, tell the public uh, now, where, where are you located we're at 114 east stevenson 114 okay right off the square there right off easy the square. easy to find very easy to find down I, I used to call the old building right up from me the clark and oaf building a lot of people know it as clark and oaf it was a furniture store for years <clears throat> but you're just right down from yes, that we location are. There. We have, there's Guitar Smith, right then the alleyway, yeah, and then Smith, we're yeah. right next to that. Well, Guitar Smith's been in Harrison for many, many years. Very. So most people can identify with the Guitar Smith's location. Uh, so, which churches joined you? Which ones did you get to come in? Of course, Waterfalls International, sure. Pastor Kevin Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, Caps Full Gospel, Pastor okay. Eddie Reed, mm -hmm. and Life Abundant at Bergman. It's Billy Edgar is the pastor okay. there. That makes it much better when you've got more organizations involved in this thing. They can help the support side of it and promote it and they got the congregations touch a lot of other people That's so that really makes correct. a big difference and we need that we need the word to get out you know about the very bad need of food that is needed in our community well tell, tell me a little bit about that i mean i know there's it's, it's been a real concern with the economic conditions like we've had over the last several years uh, people are struggling and then you've got the homeless situation which a lot of people don't realize we do have a uh, number of people in this area that are homeless and then and because of the food cost and lack of jobs perhaps uh, the the food pantries are really getting stretched out uh, very much so i would say there's more than a 30 percent increase in people coming to food pantries um, what we call food insecurity unfortunately Arkansas ranks number one nationally for food insecure mm. and that breaks my heart and mm. it breaks the heart of a lot of other folks this is our community typically when you think of hunger you you're thinking of other countries which it does exist there but it's right here on our front step mm -hmm. um, Boone County rate is 15.3% of the households that are food insecure or lacking enough food to get them through the month. Mm, wow. I'm very passionate about this. Wow. Um, there's a real need, a very mm. big need. Mm. So how do you do uh, your food pantry there? Now, it, your food pantry is at that location, is that correct? That's correct. And then your thrift stores there as That's well. That's correct. Is, are they kind of separated type thing, or you kind of keep have, the food? We have the food separated uh from the thrift okay. store items. Obviously for distribution purposes. Correct. Right? That is correct. So how how does people, how do they come go about coming if, if I needed some food, how would I do it? We distribute the food on Tuesdays, okay. which today's the day. Sure. We begin at noon to four. We just ask people to be a Boone County resident and to bring a box or a basket, something that we can put their food in. Okay. So. Now do you, do you 
pick you, you put so much, certain kinds of food in their box for them. That's correct. Try to more of a balance as much as you can. Yeah, we do try to get a balance. We try to have a protein and we have vegetables and we a grain. We try to have as much balance as we can. Okay. <clears throat> your your food products um I'm assuming because it's so difficult otherwise, but they're non perishable type food product. You, you know, do you have frozen foods too, or just yes, we do. Oh, we, you do. We have, do okay. have frozen foods, okay. and we ha- give out eggs, okay, and bread. Good. I didn't know if you had accommodations for the freezer space and and so forth. Well, we're always in need of freezers and refrigerators. Okay, but right now we're doing fairly well. Okay. Well, if somebody out there watching the show and you happen to have a free, good used freezer or refrigerator and you don't need it anymore, maybe you replaced it with a new one or whatever the case may be, that happens a lot, rather than sell it, go down by and see if they need it and, and donate it to them. They'd be very, very uh, pleased the fact that they might need another unit to put that stuff Always, in. Always, because good. we have a growing amount of clients that are coming to us. Um, DHS will require refer some of the clients sure. to us and then others are hearing it word by mouth and they just see the sign they'll come in and inquire and there is a very big need do you get uh, i mean obviously a, a place like this needs donations so i'm assuming you would take donations yes. from anybody in mean, the church people help yes but if somebody just walked in and said hey you know i think you got a great cause going and you want to give them 20 bucks or a hundred dollars or five dollars or a dollar uh, that it would be very appreciative. That would be very appreciated. You know, yeah. either money, food, sure, time food, even. Food, we'll food, food need, would be great too. It would be awesome. And we always need some people to come help, you know, hang up clothes or go through donations. So there's always a need and there's always some way you could help out. Okay. So uh, people that, that uh, bring, you know, maybe bring good used clothing to you, uh, is there a requirement on your clothing? I mean, does it have to be... I don't know. Some places you have to have it dry cleaned or washed or whatever. Uh, I mean, what 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 do you require? I don't have a requirement on that. Matter of fact, um, I take all the clothing to my home mm-hmm. and wash and dry it. Oh, uh, wow. Tennis shoes, I take them home and wash and take them back to the thrift store so that we can hang them up and price them and wow. get them out. You're one busy lady. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's amazing. That you de- definitely are dedicated to it if you're doing all that. Plus working at the store. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my heart is very much so into trying to help our community. And I know there's a lot of others out there that have sure. that same calling. Yeah, that's okay. More yeah. than better. It is. You know. It takes us all. It really does. It, yeah. it does. Well, especially in today's times. I mean, a lot of people are stressed. Uh, you know, if you've lost a job or perhaps both adults lost a, uh, have lost their job, uh, you know, it's it's tough. And it's really the... It, Living in a small community, we should say, you know, we've got a little bit of an advantage over maybe living in a metropolitan area, although metropolitan areas have uh, help centers for their people as well. But here it's more of a one-on-one situation. You know, if you know of somebody that needs some help, help them out. If you can't help them by yourself, maybe get involved uh, with Patsy and some of these organizations that are joining together and uh, as a group uh, doing a good job in in helping the community. So I I applaud you uh, for that. Um, Okay. Let's talk about, what about, uh, when are you open? The thrift store is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, and that's when we can also accept donations. The food distribution is done on Tuesdays okay. uh, from noon to 4, and like I said before, just bring a box or a Okay, basket. so you, you just you have distribution of the food just one day a week? Yes. Okay. Now, we will do it in emergency situations, like if someone was not aware that we were there or sure. available or if they absolutely have no food, we will help them on an emergency basis. How's your, with this time of the year and the bad weather conditions, uh, how uh, how do you run short certain times of the year on your food products? Are you How, how do you set right now, food-wise? Well, we just placed another order. We're a member of the Food Bank of uh, North Central Arkansas out of Norfolk. Okay. And we place orders with them, plus buy from local okay. grocery stores. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said before, we try to help provide a balance of meat and vegetables, eggs, grains. There's always a shortage. We always need something, you know. So any kind of help would be very appreciated. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the the food banks or state food banks, I guess I should say, if I'm using that correctly, 
uh, you know, they're, they've got some major supporters. And I think Tyson Foods is one yes. of them. Uh, but, uh, so you're, because of your identity and what you're doing, you're able to get some products from the food bank, is like, like other organizations that are distributing. Yes, we okay. do. Matter of fact, Walmart is another big distributor. Right. They, they support the food bank. Right. I knew they did. Very yes. heavily. Yes. So. That's good. Um, I guess, uh, we've got a few minutes left. What what could be what what's your greatest need? Is it volunteers? Is it food? Is it money? Or all three? <laughs> all three. But I would say, of course, food, money, okay. so we can purchase more food to right. give out, and volunteers. Right. You know, and that's now, for now all the food you're banks. volunteering a lot of your time. How many people normally would be? Will you are you down there by your? Well, you're not today. You're here. It, do you usually have two or three people helping you? Well, on on the food day, we usually have about five of us. Okay. And then on other days, a lot of times I am at the store alone. Okay. And then some days there there will be one other person. Somebody comes in. Yes. Is, is it all volunteer? All volunteer. Wow, no pay. No pay. We don't, don't ask for any. We don't want any. Don't we want just any. want to yeah. try to help the community. Self-satisfaction. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I, I must tell you, I I, uh, I know there's and there's some great organizations in our community. And, and we again, we live in a small community here. And, and, and if you live here and this is your home, you need to make it your home and make a, and be a part of the community. So it, organizations like Patsy is involved in here. Uh, this is something where uh, who knows at some point in time you may need it or I may need it. So uh, always remember if you have an opportunity to give to help out, uh, do it when you can because at some point in time uh, somebody you know, a family member, or perhaps your, yourself, uh, you may have to uh, may have to go and and ask for some help in in the aspect when it comes to food or clothing or whatever it may be so uh it so people want to come down they can bring clothes monday through friday uh, and, and donate their clothes preferably you if you got clothes take clean clothes patsy doesn't have time to do all the laundry <laughs> take take nice clean clothes something that you would be proud of if you got it yourself and you're giving it away obviously but uh, uh new clothes uh, slightly used clothes anything like that that, that can support uh, the food pantry by uh, giving them uh uh, the parts for the thrift store where people right. come in. And I, I bet you have a lot of people come in there. Uh, we do. Shopping. And there's more and more that are learning that we're there and they're coming in. What if someone came in and they needed clothes but they couldn't afford to buy? Do you give them? We give them to okay, them. I we pull them would. off the rack and we give them to I them. I assumed you would. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, do, does your building, do you have to pay for it or somebody donate that? Uh, it's not donated, but my, my church is helping pay the rent. And then we pay for utilities. Oh, very good. That's so. good. So it's a church. Well, that's that's fantastic. Patsy, thank you so much for coming in today. I, I want to ch- thank Jim Bumgarden, who works with me here, for telling me about you. I wasn't aware exactly what was going on there. I'd seen your location, but obviously very worthwhile. And, and uh, hats off to you for all the the time that you spend personally and the desire that you have to make this work and to help other people. Thanks for coming in. We'll thank get together. And, and I'll come down and check you out. That sounds days. good. Come in. Look Bring forward. me some stuff. i got some clothes. I need to get rid of anyway, and they're nice. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Connection here today on TKO8 Television. We hope we brought some information to you, but perhaps you didn't know about. If you do know about some of these organizations, help them out when you can, because, again, uh, at some point in time, you may need their help as well. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you again next time here on Connection. The scientists at Shell have created Shell V-Power Premium Gasoline, which actively cleans for better performance, helping make the roads more exciting to drive. Choose Shell V-Power Premium Gasoline, performance that excites. At First National Bank, we're making banking easier with free checking, secure online bill pay, agri loans. We're meeting your financial needs. First National Bank offers what other big banks do, along with some things they don't. While we're big enough to provide you with the services you need, we're small enough to know your name. We offer our customers eight convenient locations. Come see why First National Bank is the right bank for you. First National Bank, the right bank. Member FDIC. 